In this video, we will be answering the question on the screen from the 2022 Ordinary Level Maths Exam, Paper 1. If you are looking for any other questions from this paper, there will be a link in the description to a playlist that will have them all. And this is question four. It has functions, which we're gonna start off with. Then it's gonna talk about differentiation and we'll return back to differentiation again in part B. Has graphs in part B. Um, it's a fairly tricky question. The last parts in both A and B are fairly tricky. But part A1 starts off not too bad. You'll see questions like this most years. It'll give you a function. The fact, don't worry about this letter. It could be any letter you want. You often see F, but you see G and H quite regularly as well. So this function, GX, is equal to all of this. Um, and they want to find G5. And they do this very common. Basically, all you have to do to do this is everywhere you see an X, put in a 5. That's all. See an X here, I'm going to put a 5 in. I always put brackets around things when I'm in placing them in, uh, inputting them into equations. You don't always need it, but it's very helpful, especially when minuses are involved. So a uh, minus 7 and again a 5 here. It's helpful, otherwise it would look like 75, but it's not, it's seven multiplied by five squared, uh, plus a five goes in here, this bracket's not needed, and so on. Okay, we can clean all this up. Go ahead and use a calculator. Five to the power of three, I believe is one, two, five. Um, five squared is 25 multiplied by seven is, and then multiplied by a minus, and uh, one, seven, five, plus five, minus 12, and again, use calculators. I used the calculator when I did this out myself. I have the notes here, uh, minus 57. Okay, so that's the answer to A part one. For part two, they ask us to find G prime X, and they tell us that means the derivative. So we just want to differentiate this first equation here. I won't go into a lesson about how to differentiate, but it is, um, it's a set of rule. It's a, it's a rule that you can just follow quite regularly. So practice will make perfect on this. And if you need a reminder, that rule is actually written in your tables book that you're allowed to take into your exam. So the rule says when we're differentiating something, x to the power of three, we take the number that's up here and we multiply it out front. So three x, and then we take one away from it. So it becomes a two. Again here, two multiplied by minus seven is minus 14. And we take one away from that. And there's a one left. Now we, we don't usually write the one. You know what, I'm gonna write in all the numbers that I don't usually write here. And then we'll write it again without, without the extras. For example, there's a one here, x to the power of one. If, and here's an extra one that you uh, most people forget. There's an x to the power of zero with every number. <laughs> now, don't write that in everywhere, but it's gonna help when I'm explaining this. Okay, we differentiate that, that, this guy, one multiplied by the number in front is one, x, take one away, x to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is one, one times one times one is just one, and lastly, zero multiplied by this is, is zero. Zero multiplied by anything is zero. So it doesn't really matter that there's an x to a minus one. Multiply it by zero, it's gone. Let me put it in, plus zero. So that's that differentiate. You'd, give, you'd get full marks for that, but I'll just clean it up. A three to the power of x, three, three times x squared minus 14 x plus one. Oh, well, I never fully said on this. One multiplied by one, x to the power of zero. Well, let's put it in, x to the power of zero. Anyway, that's your full answer here at the end. So that's um, A part two. Okay, on to number three. And number three is actually a really difficult question. I quite like it as a maths teacher, but um, I'm guessing a lot of students won't, so I'm guessing a lot of people might be tuning in to find out what the hell's going on here. And they tell you that g prime five is equal to six. And that's saying the derivative at the point five is equal to six. So that's gonna help us um, in a moment. They also talk about a tangent uh, to the function. Here's the original function. I've drawn it roughly here. You don't have this in the exam. You're not given this. I'm just gonna use it as, a, um, as an example. It, it, I tried to draw it roughly correctly, but it honestly doesn't matter if it's correctly drawn or not. It's just as an example. 
So a graph, a tangent, first of all, um, roughly the point is actually around here. A tangent to a point looks something like this, just nearly touching it. What they're asking you in this question to know is, they want you to know that the, the derivative of a function at a point gives you the slope of this tangent. And I didn't say, uh, but what they're actually looking for is the equation of this tangent. So y is equal to mx plus c, or do they, yes, yeah, they want it in the form of ax plus by is equal to c. So they want the equation of this line here. Um, again, you don't know what it looks like. What they're asking you to know is an equation of a line needs a point and it needs a slope. And they're asking you to know that this is the slope. Six is the slope. They've given you the derivative at a point and they've told you the point, they've told you the x of the point is five. So the derivative at this point is six. They want you to know the derivative is the same as the slope. That's really what they're getting at in this question. Um, so like I said, to get an equation of a line, this is coordinate geometry. All we need is a point and a slope. And uh, we have most of the point, x is equal to five. And uh, the first part, part one, I'm forgetting the number now. Ah, here it is, minus 57. So the very first part, we put five in, and we got minus 57 now. You have everything you need now to get the equation of a line. Um, use the formula, there's a couple of ways. You can use this formula here, some people are good at that. I'll use the more common one, y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. This is x1, this is y1, and that's m. Put all this in, y minus minus 50, I'm sorry, y minus minus 57 is plus 57 is equal to 6 multiplied by x minus 5. We can clean this up here. We have y plus 57 equals to 6x minus 30. Let's get all the x's and y's on one side. They want it to look like this one here. Get all the x's and y's on the same side. I like to keep x as positive, so let's get everything over this side. Uh, we'll have two, 6x minus y. Take y from both sides. Um, add, add 30 to both sides, and we'll get uh, 87. So 6x minus y is equal to 87. They ask you to put, a, put the equals on the right. Same thing, though. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Okay, on to part B. Um, part B is actually, part B1 at least, is an extremely easy question if you know how to do it, but it's a very hard question to get a temp marks on if you're, if you're very confused. So they ask you to uh, write the value of x where u prime, uh, u prime x, the derivative of u is, is negative, is negative. So you can pick any number you want, well, once it's correct. So what they're asking here is, what does it mean for a derivative to be negative? And we learn that it is something that will come up in most exams when a derivative is positive, when it's negative, and when it's equal to zero. That's something we need to know. When the tangent to an equation, and you can draw tangents all over this guy. When the tangent's pointing upwards, uh, my marker here is a tangent in this case, I don't have a ruler. Um, when it's pointing upwards, it's positive, it's positive, it's positive. Here it's zero, and here it's negative. So really, any number, uh, I looked up in the marking scheme and said anything over five will be fine. Uh, technically, it should be less than 10, but they said any number over five. But I'd say, looking at this, I would say about six, seven, eight, nine, all of them are fine. So we'll say, um, x is equal to seven. But again, let me just put in six as well, eight, nine. And the, the, the exam would have taken 10 and five, I think. Might, I don't know if it'd take 11, because 11's outside the range. 
Okay, on to part two, and I know it's the mistake I had in this drawing back in part one. It shouldn't matter to anything you did, uh, but I fixed it here. Um, they ask you to, at the point four two, which is four two, which is this point here, they ask you to draw a tangent. Um, so again, I, I did this in part one. It looks something like this. Uh, something like like that. It's just important that you don't go through, hit, the, it's important that you hit it once. If you don't, don't have a tangent going through like this, or, or even my second drawing there was pretty bad. Okay, so they've asked you to draw a tangent and use that tangent to find the value of u prime four. So again, from, from the other part, we, we need to know that the derivative from part A we need to know that the derivative of something is the same as the slope. And we have a line now. Let me, let me draw that again quite roughly. We have a line, that's that line here. There's the point four two. So that's two high and four wide. Basically they're asking us for the slope of this line. The slope of this line should be equal to the derivative here. And the slope of this line is, it's two up, four wide. Two up, four wide. Two over four. And um, you could also go zero, zero, four, two, and you could do the slope formula. But really with a triangle, we should know that the height divided by the base is a slope. Rise over run is another way to do it. So, uh, sorry, that's not the full answer. One over two would be my full answer. Now I, uh, I cheated, I looked at the marking scheme, so I knew this slope should have roughly looked like this. It should have come out as a half, but it doesn't matter what number you get here. Once your drawing is correct, once your drawing is um, consistent with your number. So if your drawing is roughly correct, it looks like an okay slope. Even if your drawing hits somewhere over there, and it looks more like this, two high and six wide, and you get um, two over six, which is equal to one over three. That's full marks as well. They don't care if your drawing is bad. They care that you understand that the derivative is the same as the slope, and the slope can be got, gotten from a drawing of a line. That's what they're looking for in that question. Okay, I don't know if I explained any of that, that well. It's honestly a really hard question to teach um, because as a teacher, it's very easy for me to do. It's a question where I could just go, I could have done this whole question in two minutes because it's very quick and easy to see all the, where the numbers go. There's no calculations, there's no steps to go through. It's, it's like old fashioned studying. You need to read the book, read the examples and see that derivatives is the same as slope. You need to read that uh, when a slope is negative, a line's going down. These are some of the things you have to learn and remember, I'm afraid. But I hope, um, I, hope I was some way of a help and um, thanks for watching and have a great day.